All right, kids and squids, we're gonna get started on the twin turbo Mustang today. Last video I did just kind of went over everything that kind of doesn't really look right or needs to be corrected. But before I start pulling everything apart, I kind of want to do just an overall health check on the thing. So I'm gonna do a compression test, check the oil, I want to cut the oil filter open. I'm curious to drop the pan on the transmission and one, see how much fluid I get out of it. And that may help me determine if the fluid was low. It does have a low car dipstick on it, but these low car flexibles are kind of notorious for being inaccurate. And I don't know if it was calibrated properly. So it'd be interesting to at least drop the fluid, see how much comes out. Cause you can kind of get an idea on a pan drop if it was low based on how much fluid comes out of it. And then I could check the fluid, make sure it's not like dark or burnt or anything. But I really want to do the compression check because based on the file that I pulled off of it, it was really lean. It was maxed out on the fuel correction at 50%. So it probably needed more fuel than that. The data log showed that it was up to about 10 to 11 pounds. And the tune showed that it was set up for 75% duty cycle on the boost controller, which if it has like a four to six pound spring in it, that might be pretty close. It does have dual Walbro 450 pumps in it, showing about 70 PSI just sitting here idling. I do have the fuel pump prime set to like 150 seconds just so I can watch it, see what it does. So right now it's sitting at 70 PSI. started it drops down to about 60 68 it was like 66 68 it does have a pqy regulator on it and that was with the screw backed all the way out so the pqy usually does decent with one 450 when you have two 450s it'll over pressure so you can get it to regulate down to like 58 psi with the one pump usually with the second 450 it will over pressure so we'll have to drill the return on that so we can get the fuel pressure down i did see a video of a short pull with the car and the fuel pressure actually dropped while he was rolling into it. And that was only on like four pounds, he said in the video. It's just to watch out for later to make sure that the regulator is actually rising and falling with boost. Because if it's not rising with boost, it's technically acting like it's dropping fuel pressure, even if it stays the same and then it reduces the capacity of the injector. So that could be why it's starting to run into a lean spot early. So I'm gonna start it up. We'll get it up to temp and then I'll start pulling the injectors out, check all those, do the compression test. Then I'll probably jack it up and start draining the oil, cut the filter open start pulling the accessories and turbo kit off. So I do want to verify too, because it has the motor plate on it, that the accessories were machined. The water pump should be fine, but like the power steering pump and the alternator bracket and stuff. I just want to make sure that stuff's all adjusted to account for the quarter inch for the motor plate, just to make sure everything's aligned here. Cause he did say he was throwing belts. So let's do that. I'll warm it up and do the compression test. So go ahead and unplug the coil packs and the injector harness. This is what's kind of cool about the Terminator X is it does have uh, a separate injector harness. So one unplugs all of them so you don't have to do each one individually. And then I can just unplug the coil pack harnesses and should have, shouldn't have to worry about spark or fuel. I can just crank it now. I'll uh, pull the spark plugs out. Let's start with number seven. We'll start in the back. Get this guy on here quick. A little tight. Number seven, I put the socket on and I couldn't tell if the socket was actually on the plug because I wasn't getting any resistance from the plug. Um, and I just checked all of the plugs on the driver's side and all of them are not even tight. Yeah, they're just hand tight. All of them on the driver's side, I was able to just put the socket in and then twist them off by hand. That's not, not a good start. Pass your side quick. That plug wire just like fell right off. That one's tight. All right, the passenger side was tight. All right, put the tester on it. It's really tight in there, especially when it's hot. <laughs> All right, so what I'll do is I'll go in and I'm gonna open the throttle blade with the pedal and then I'll crank it over and I'll probably count the number of revolutions just so I do it the same on every cylinder. Mm. 
We have 150 on number seven. So the tip of the plug looks okay, but you can see it's all wet around the threads on the back side here. Okay, so driver's side is done. We got 155, 160, 160, 150. So that looks pretty decent there. And then here's what the plugs look like. 1357. But you can see all the threads and everything. They were all covered in oil, and these are like actually a little bit burnt on the outside. So, uh, good thing we caught that. I did order new plugs for it already, so we'll be good there. So now we'll go ahead and get on the passenger side. All right, so we got 155, 160, 155 on the passenger side so far. And I noticed while I was working over here, it smells a lot like when you order a margarita at the resort and you know that this is gonna result in you like not being able to find your hotel room. That's what it smells like. And it's coming from the catch can. It smells like very, very strong like alcohol. <laughs> so it is kind of common to get a little bit in there, but that smells pretty strong. So it might not be a, a bad idea to like leak test the injectors and make sure all that stuff's good. Uh, flow test the injectors too. These are uh, DECA 80 injectors. I guess they're like the genuine DECA 80s. Last little zip here. We got pretty close to 160, so I'm gonna call it 160. So leave a comment if you've ever not been able to find your hotel room. I did that once actually, it's kind of a funny story, but that was a four loco night, so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the soil filter open. Um, well, I was able to verify that that smell is coming out of the oil. There's a lot of fuel in the oil, so this is turning out to be a quite the mess because the filter was on so tight I ended up having to stab a screwdriver through it so it's leaking out the bottom right now I'm trying to do this I had to stab a screwdriver through it and then crank on it and I could barely get it pulling on the screwdriver I had to go one full rotation with the screwdriver before I could even loosen it by hand so that thing was on there so tight is you don't need the oil filter to be on that tight like snug and then one more full turn is too much <laughs> Trying really hard not to cut myself on these pieces sticking out. Okay, so I did get all the filter out. Didn't really see anything too bad in there. That's not too bad. These little black spots are from the epoxy that was actually around the filter. There's no metal or anything really in the bottom. That's kind of what I was looking for. Any like metal flake or metal shavings, anything like that. Especially now knowing that it does have a lot of fuel going through, so it was probably intermittently losing oil pressure or having oil pressure fluctuations. All right, there it is. So you can see the big wad of fuel on the top. And this isn't even really bad yet because it hasn't had time to settle. I did just run this and allow it to get up to temp right before I dump this. So all this light color, if I leave this sit overnight or for a couple days, it'll start to darken back up and then the fuel will pull more at the top. But that's definitely not supposed to be that way. And I have seen oil come out of the Ranger, kind of milky looking like that from the E85 and cold starts and short runs in winter. So you'll start to get like condensation in the oil and some E85 a little bit, but not usually that bad. So I'm guessing there's like a fuel injector leak or something else going on where fuel is actually getting into the crankcase. I'll probably check the diaphragm on the fuel pressure regulator, just making sure that it's not sucking fuel back in through the regulator hose. The only other thing I can think right now is that maybe with the driver's side bank not being fully tight, that it wasn't completely burning the fuel on that side because it didn't have like proper compression, but not really sure on that. So, so either way, that's not good. We'll definitely uh, have the injectors tested, make sure that they're not leaking. Other than that, while I was crawling around, I did find out that this transmission actually has a trans brake in it. So there's a button inside. I, I pushed the button and I heard it click. So. This thing does have a trans brake, so that's pretty cool. Right now it's just hooked up power directly to the solenoid through the button, uh, and nothing is hooked up through the holly. Probably set that up so we can control the trans brake through the Terminator, and then we'll be able to do bump. If he wants bump, I'll have to ask him if he wants to do that. All right, so I got the fuel pump priming now. I'm gonna just pull this line off the regulator and make sure that there's nothing 
going on there. All right, that's dry. So at least that's a good sign that there's not fuel coming out of that. So next I'm gonna pull the intake off and then I'm gonna see if there's any leaks coming out of the injectors. Okay, so my plan for this is gonna to be to uh, take the intake pipe off, I'll take the intake up, I'm gonna take the front fuel lines off. The rear lines are kinda of long, so I'll be able to pull the intake forward and turn it, then I'll connect the front lines to the regulator again. I'll probably try to raise the intake up a little bit just so I can prime it and see if the injectors are leaking. Let it sit for a little bit. Let's see what we find. All right, I got the intake pipe off and I found there's no, no bead on it. All right, I believe I got all the bolts and stuff loose now. The fuel rails are actually bent and they're in the way of the bolt heads. So there is fuel coming out of the catch can line. The hose is dripping. So I wonder if the catch can was like full and just <clears throat> flowing back into the crankcase. So I was able to Frankenstein some hoses here. I put a plug in one side of the regulator, use the crossover tube that was going from passenger to driver's side, and that's going over the top of the engine now. Two in the back, deadheaded on one side. So I'll be able to pressure it, still use the rail with it upside down so I can see what's going on. All right, well, the rail is primed. I don't see any leaks. Well, I guess that's a good sign that the injectors aren't leaking. We just have to figure out where that fuel's coming from. I wonder if... <clears throat> I wonder if it was just getting so backed up in the catch can that it was flowing back into the crankcase because it was never emptied. Okay, well that's a good sign that there's no obvious leak on it. I'll still probably send them to Hunter and have them flow matched and tested. Maybe they're hanging up or there's some stuff in them. That could be a possibility too. The wideband sensor is also on the passenger side and the driver's side bank was loose. So if there was an issue with compression over on this side with the plugs being loosed, the wideband wouldn't have been able to correct or adjust for that, so the fueling could have been off on the driver bank. The plugs didn't really represent that too much, and we did also have the one plug wire over here on the passenger side that seemed like it was loose, so maybe if that had like an intermittent connection where it was working sometimes and not other times, that'd be putting some fuel in, so kind of a lot of variables, but at least we verified they're not leaking just while they're sitting. We'll send them out, get them tested, and... Next, I'll be pulling the turbo kit off of this thing.